Anger and empathy are inherently incompatible. If you have an anger problem and want to do something to change that pattern, you can accomplish a great deal by improving your empathy skills. Today, anger management expert Dr. Ronald Potter Efron, author of the audiobook Healing the Angry Brain, offers practical advice to help you improve your empathy. Hi, welcome to Your Great Journey. We offer brief tips, techniques, and insights to help you move in positive directions and master big change. For more information, please visit YourGreatJourney.com. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit WetwareMedia.com. That's W-E-T-W-A-R-E. M-E-D-I-A dot com. Today, we are sharing an excerpt from Healing the Angry Brain, How Understanding the Way Your Brain Works Can Help You Control Anger and Aggression, an audiobook by Dr. Ronald Potter Efron. Feeling out of control when angry and having trouble thinking or making decisions might, over time, train your brain to build more pathways that allow that behavior. You can, however, take back control and rewire your thought processes. By removing the mystery behind your angry brain, you can gain a new understanding of your brain and learn how to regulate anger. In this episode, Dr. Ronald Potter Efron explains the relationship between anger and empathy, detailing how looking outside yourself could be the key to calming what's inside. Committing to Improving Empathy Neuroplasticity, or the brain's ability to change, allows us to develop, maintain, and improve skills, including empathy, but only with sustained commitment. Indeed, improving your empathy skills is quite similar to improving your physical stamina through exercise or your physical health by altering your diet. In any of these situations, you would need to make the goal a top priority in order to see improvement. And you need to keep that goal as a high priority over many months so your skills could evolve. The bottom line is that it takes steady effort to get better at empathy. You need to practice, practice, practice. But the payoff is huge. Eventually, the neural networks that facilitate empathy will become stronger, faster, and more efficient. Empathic responses will become easier and more automatic over time as you develop the habit of empathy. If you aren't sure if you're ready to make that strong of a commitment, consider three of the rewards of becoming more consistently empathic. First, you'll probably be less angry. When you tune into others' thoughts and feelings, you'll better understand why they say what they do and behave as they do. Those reasons make sense from their perspective. Second, people respond favorably to empathic listeners. Empathy attracts just as anger repels. If you would rather have people come toward you instead of walking away, becoming more empathic can help. Third, empathy is the bridge that links human beings. You'll almost certainly feel better connected with the people you love as you improve your ability to enter into their worlds. In the remainder of this chapter, you'll find specific techniques for improving your empathy skills. Listen to them, then put commitment to work by choosing one or two and trying them out for a week. If you find that your life and relationships get even just a little better, seriously consider making a six-month commitment to developing more empathy. Paying close attention to facial expressions. One aspect of empathy, effective attunement, is primarily automatic and unconscious. Naturally, that makes it hard to directly improve effective attunement. After all, you can't give your mirror neurons an order to start working more efficiently. However, there is something you can do to help them work better. You can consciously remember to keep your eyes on other people's faces. Remember that mirror neurons fire when one person observes another's facial expressions and physical gestures, particularly movements that signal intent. A fearful face predicts flight. So mirror neurons related to fear and flight fire when that face is observed. An angry face predicts aggression. And once again, mirror neurons fire. The target of that anger may, however, 
respond with fear, shame, or other such emotions. Just because mirror neurons related to anger and aggression are firing doesn't mean the observer will take similar action. These facial signals are rather obvious and fairly easily observed. However, many facial expressions are subtle. They may contain only hints of emotion or blends of emotions. It's very important to catch subtle but important signals, such as a brief sigh, a quick eye roll, a single tear, or an angry glance. Don't miss noticing these brief signals because you're caught up in your own thoughts or because you're studiously observing your feet or the television or computer. One caution. Watch carefully, but don't interpret excessively. Don't assume you know the meaning of every expression on other people's faces. Nonverbal information is easy to misinterpret, especially if you're angry. A brief sigh, for instance, may signal weariness, but it doesn't mean the person is tired of you or of dealing with you. Maybe that person is just plain tired. Likewise, a single tear could be a tear of joy, not sadness. Even when your mirror neurons are firing correctly, your conscious mind may override them with inaccurate interpretations. It's also important to notice other people's gestures. Hand and arm movements are particularly expressive. You must watch for them as well if you want to improve your effective attunement. Occasionally copying others' expressions or gestures. Imagine this scenario. You're talking with a friend and notice that she's furrowing her brow. You're puzzled by that expression. One way to explore its meaning is to furrow your own brow. As you do so, perhaps you'll realize that she's feeling confused. That could help you recognize that you forgot to give your friend some important background information. This is an example of how it can be helpful to consciously imitate other people's gestures or tone of voice. Be careful, though. If you overdo mimicking, others may think that you're mocking them. I recommend that you use this technique only when you believe it will genuinely help you better understand others. Encouraging your curiosity about others. Now let's move on to the second component of empathy, mentalizing, which is more intentional and thoughtful than effective attunement. You can build skills in this cognitive aspect of empathy more directly. The goal is to put yourself into other people's shoes and appreciate the way they look at life. You can make better sense of what others say and do by entering their world, though it's important not to lose track of your own. There are specific techniques that will help you develop this skill, but first, you must be motivated to do so. To assess your motivation, listen to the following statements and consider how much you agree or disagree with each statement. I think people are endlessly fascinating. There's no such thing as a boring person. Everybody has a story to tell that's worth my time and energy. My life will be enriched by taking interest in others, especially those who are closest to me. If you are to improve your empathy, your answers need to be true, true, and true. Let's take these statements one at a time. People are endlessly fascinating. This is true if you make it true in your mind. If you expect people to be interesting, they will be. If you expect them to bore you to tears, they will do exactly that. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You can choose to expect boredom, but you'll never get better at empathy that way. Everybody has a story to tell. People's life stories are composed of both memories and myth. They focus on turning points in life, births and deaths, successes and failures, marriages and divorces, choices made and paths not taken. Some people are eager to share their life story. Others hold back. Eventually, though, almost everyone will share their story if you show genuine, non-judgmental interest. My life will be enriched by taking interest in others. Human beings are social by nature. We wouldn't possess mirror neurons if our brains weren't programmed for connection. But anger often leads to disconnection, separation, loneliness, and isolation. If you put your anger aside long enough to take a real interest in others, you will almost certainly begin to feel more involved. You'll also probably feel good at the deepest levels of your being about that development. Developing Good Listening Skills 
Empathy is about listening as well as watching. Although listening may seem passive, it's an art and a skill you can develop. Here are several tips on how to improve your listening skills. Keep an open mind. Everybody has some biases. We don't live in neutral gear. We all have belief systems that we defend. However, empathy requires that you consciously put aside stereotypes, biases, and judgments. For example, maybe you believe that marriage is sacred, that higher education is useless, and that you should always try to be optimistic. Then you find yourself in a conversation with someone who doesn't believe in marriage, who values higher education, and who is a card-carrying pessimist. Here's what you need to do. Consciously put your beliefs in a little mental storeroom for a while. Remember that empathy demands you be interested in the other person's world and enter into that world as best you can by asking questions and listening carefully. Throughout, avoid the temptation to argue or try to change the other person's mind. Ask open-ended questions. Open-ended questions can't be answered with a simple yes or no. For example, Will you be home by 6 o'clock is a closed question, whereas when will you be coming home is open-ended. The value of open-ended questions is that they leave more room for other people to tell their story. Ask about other people's feelings, goals, values, life history, and self-perception. Don't stick to safe topics like how are the kids or do you think it's going to rain. Practicing empathy involves offering others an opportunity to reveal important aspects of their personality. Be prepared to share your world. Just as anger begets anger, so does empathy beget empathy. When you try to fully understand others, don't be surprised when they return the favor. These people are likely to ask you questions and listen intently to your answers. Here, too, you have a choice. You can answer with vague generalizations or evade the question. However, I recommend that you do your best to respond, especially if you're trying to become less angry. Feeling truly understood and cared about is a wonderful antidote to anger. Thanks for listening to this excerpt from the audiobook, Healing the Angry Brain, How Understanding the Way Your Brain Works Can Help You Control Anger and Aggression. You can purchase the complete audiobook from any major online audiobook retailer. If you'd like more information, please visit yourgreatjourney.com. Please be sure to subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. And if you like the show, please rate and review it. And please share it with friends who might also enjoy it. Thanks for listening. Your Great Journey is brought to you by audiobook publisher Wetware Media. Wetware Media publishes a wide variety of personal transformation audiobooks available from any major online audiobook retailer. For more information, please visit wetwaremedia.com. That's W-E-T-W-A-R-E-M-E-D-I-A dot com.